Hello and welcome. Today we're talking about a small but mighty bathroom I'm putting in for my kids. There's gonna be a steam shower, a flip up toilet, there's gonna be wireless speaker and fabulous lighting. But before we get to the reveal, which will be in a later video, what I wanna talk about is I'm in the construction phase where like things are happening and they're not coming out as I envision and I have to do changes, which is a called rework. And it does cost you money, but by opening up this process to you and showing you all the mistakes I've made, I am hopeful that you will avoid these mistakes when you're putting in any kind of construction project and especially a bathroom. So I'm going to go through the seven tips that I have and I'm also going to interweave the mistakes I've been making so you don't make them yourself. So let's get started. Tip number one is if you hear the words it's fine while you're in the construction phase, that should send off bells and whistles in your head. They're trying to tell you that yeah, it's not perfect and you might hate it later. My first it's fine was this bench. We put a steam shower in and I really wanted a bench to sit down and relax. And when I got home and I sat down in the constructed bench, I realized that there's spillage. I got a cheek hanging and everyone said, it's fine. And I knew that if I went with the it's fine, that I would regret it and I'd have to squeeze my body in and be uncomfortable. So we're gonna widen that bench because I know without a shadow of a doubt, that fine would not be fine when I first got into that first steam and I had a cheek hanging. So when you hear fine, hey, I need to make you aware of something, just make sure that you're digging deep and figuring out if you will be happy in the long run. Tip number two is that when you're putting a room together, especially a bathroom, what you are doing is you're actually putting a whole palette together that you're gonna work off and make sure everything goes together in that palette. So when someone says just put everything together and it all go together, that's like a target run. Like you go, you grab boots, you grab laundry detergent, ooh, you see a scarf you like, maybe a cute bathing suit, and you go home with a bunch of stuff that you like. Now when you're putting a room together, it's like when you go to a wedding and you're putting a whole look together. You get a beautiful dress and then you make sure that the shoes and the purse and everything comes together to pull off a look. Now. When you're using a lot of color, then you're matching the colors and the patterns. But when you're going for a soft, neutral palette, like I am doing here, then what you're looking for is the undertones. It's actually harder because it's a more technical look because you're matching the undertones of all of your neutrals. And I'll tell you, I made a mistake. So here I picked out all these neutrals with green undertones. And then I fell in love with this gorgeous marble with a blue undertone. When I realized my mistake, I instantly went into a mode that I do when, I have, when I'm at work. I use numbers to organize my decisions. So what I did was I decided that if they would not take back the tile, then it would be a $600 mistake. I would live with it for $600, but if they would just charge me a restocking fee, then I would go ahead and pay the restocking fee and switch out the tile. They were very gracious and I was able to pick out this tile, which had the green undertones, and it cost me about $120. I am much happier with spending $120 and fixing my mistake than living with like an undertone that I would not be happy with in the long run. Using numbers to organize your decision making is very crucial when you're doing these rework and these changes. And then knowing yourself, like, can I live this with this in the long run? These are the questions that you want to start to ask yourself. So you're making those decisions versus having those decisions land on you. So tip number three, catching your mistakes before they become permanent. What I want you to do is recreate the space. Now don't buy tile, leave it in a box, go to work, get it installed and come home and be like, oh, that did not look the way I thought it was going to look. It's permanently fixed in your home. So you gotta dig deep, do a little work and lay the tile out so you can see what it looks like in the room. And I have to tell you, it's going to look a lot different in a larger quantity than it is in the samples. So I try to recreate the room no matter what in any construction project I'm doing. If you're doing a kitchen with an island, get two garbage cans, cut out a big cardboard space the size of your island to see how it's going to go. I stand in a shower and pretend to wash my hair to see if the space is too small. So really using the spacing, the ideas, the mistakes, the things you want to change, how you're gonna use the room will really come to you in those quiet moments. So tip number four, shower niches 
Oh, I got a lot to say about these because they are done wrong so many times. And in fact, I have one in my house. Here is one in my bathroom that has all this wasted space on top. And had I just put like a shelf across, then I'd be able to put my soaps, the razors, and everything above it. And so I made this mistake and I don't want you to make this mistake in your bathroom. Now, a shower niche is probably the most functional, useful thing that you're gonna do, so let's really dig deep and talk about it. Now, the one in this bathroom for the boys, you have to take a note that I put it on a side wall versus on a feature wall, because a niche is more of a function than a feature. Now, when you are doing this, I want you to get into the nitty gritty. I want you to get your shampoo and conditioner bottles and really put them in that niche and then say I need them this tall with a shelf right above it. It will be the best thing that you do for your bathroom. Okay, tip number five, let's talk about it, feature tiles. I have one in my bathroom. 15 years ago, I put the floor right across the tile, like a stamp right across it. It actually ends up cutting your eye and making the shower feel a lot smaller. So the reason why we are evolving away from that is because you really want to have the space breathe and really feel expansive. Tip number six is a mistake that I 100% made not thinking through the project of how I want to use this space. So we wrapped this bathroom in 10 years ago. And when we put it in, we just said, make a bathroom. And then I left it because I had young kids and I didn't want to clean an extra bathroom. Then when I went to go back to redo it, I was like, I want a steam shower, which threw off everything. Here are the things that happened once we added in the steam shower. First off, the guts of the steam shower raised the shower niche way up. Then when we added the bench, we needed to move the floor out. I had to bring a carpenter back in to redo that, and that means the glass will have an extra side on it. Then I had to bring the plumber back because then the shower, when I moved the floor out, the shower wasn't centered on the wall. Now the last mistake it made, all this rework that it was doing, is that the drain in the floor is not centered. Now could I have had the plumber center the drain? Absolutely, but I just at that point wanted to say no I'm gonna live with that because I'm not my eye is not directly going to the floor and I'm kind of hopeful with the bench and the glass and the threshold that it'll sort of blend I'm kind of taking a risk I'm kind of doing it's fine but what I really want to make a point of is that when we added this like hey let's throw a steam shower in I bought the steam shower and then I had a lot of rework to retrofit this so really make sure that you're thinking through your space and making sure you're adding all the features prior to the construction phase so you're not like me in making this mistake and having to pay. So my last tip, tip number seven, is use a contractor that you really, really trust. Sometimes I'll do is I'll bring someone in for a smaller project and see how they handle it before I bring them in for a bigger project. Now, a contractor will see so much more than you, and if he is someone that really cares about you liking the project, he will bring this up to you, and then when you're like, yes, I wanna make those changes, they will be very amendable to that. And that is really important because things are coming up. Things are coming up even with interior designers. They just are working with craftsmen people that are like, hey, I really need you to make that change. And the craftsman person says, hey, it's gonna cost you this. And the numbers go back and forth and it's a fluid process. Make sure you have that kind of relationship with the people you're bringing into your home and make sure that you feel like you can use your voice and get what you want when you're building these projects. There's my seven tips with my mistakes. I hope by being honest and open instead of just snapping my fingers and giving you a pretty reveal that you can learn from my mistakes and then you cannot make these mistakes in your own home. And I just really want you to know that you can do this. You have that power. You just need to make sure that you're thinking it through, like putting together a beautiful outfit. Make sure you're in good hands with good contractors. So when you see these mistakes, you can absolutely adjust in the construction phase. So when it's permanent, it's perfect. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you're finding these tips helpful and I will see you in my next video.